Hi, and welcome to our pilot of The Savvy Entrepreneur, where we discuss entrepreneurship and economics. In today's episode, we'll be meeting Mandy, who is the co-manager of La Vida Bell Cafe here in downtown Longmont, Colorado. We will be discussing the social and economic impacts of the COVID-19 virus. So I, I know you have a pet project too. Do you want to talk about the venture that you're putting some time into now that you've got some free time from the cafe? I have several pet projects. Which one are you talking about? Uh, the business you're looking to raise some funds on. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. So thanks to Talis and his mentorship, um, I've been developing a wholesale cannabis grow, and we have put together all the financials, a solid business plan, and have a pretty solid plan in terms of how we would move forward with that. Um, and so that's something I'm enjoying spending time on. I'm actually kind of looking forward to quarantine because there's a lot of stuff to do, a lot of things to write, you know, lots of um, just hobbies to give energy back to. But the business itself, um, the vision for it came together thanks to this time. And so that's sort of a benefit from that as well. But yeah. Did you guys hear that? So try to be productive with your time. I know you're all sitting on the couch uh, locked in with your tissues and hopefully rolls of toilet paper and uh <laughs> and yeah, food. <laughs> yeah yeah food too yeah um but yeah use this time to do something you always wanted to do whether it's learn to code on udemy or mm -hmm. starting a new business or even pick up a fun thing like knitting or you know just anything productive functional yeah so yeah, yeah. Put yourself a hat <laughs> so I have a question for you. Though. Yes. How have your projects and businesses been affected by COVID-19? Wow, that was a great question. Um, similar to La Vida Bella, uh, funding has basically dried up. Mm -hmm. uh, we were raising a million dollar round for an aerospace company that I'm involved with, actually the CEO of, and um, we had investors come in from out of town and right in the middle of this, like right before the COVID thing really kicked off, we had investors come in from out of town and uh, as soon as the investor got back home, he had a fever. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So this guy who can write, you know, the check that we need is now sick and in quarantine and we're just sitting there tw literally twiddling our thumbs uh, waiting for this capital to come in. Yeah. And, you know, with high tech, uh, ventures, you need a lot of capital in order to do the R&D that's required and the prototyping. And yeah, you know, my my team of five are just basically sitting around. Uh, it's very unfortunate because we lost a ton of momentum. Yeah. We were going into our fourth round of prototypes, uh, getting some very good test results, and now uh, we're just kind of sitting and waiting just like everyone else. It's, yeah. it's, it's very frustrating. Right. Uh, luckily, you know, we can still do some work at home, but you know, the stuff that we have to do in the lab, all that has been put on hold. One good thing that's come up of it though, is we're looking for new lab space. Oh, okay. And with this whole, you know, everyone working from home, I have a suspicion that corporate um, rent, uh, corporate uh, office, buildings are going to have a real big price drop because yeah. people are going to realize that working from home makes a lot of sense. I was kind of thinking that too, just how easily a lot of businesses have shifted to remote working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we, we, one of our team members is a professor at MIT and he was saying that he doesn't see classes going back to the way they were ever. He thinks that, yeah. um, Digital learning has, it's the age of digital learning and that things are just gonna move continually toward that because all of the barriers and the pain points that uh, weren't addressed up to this point are being addressed and worked out because mm -hmm. people need to be working at home right now. So after this, there should be no real barrier to doing it and all the solutions should be we figure it out. Uh, so I'm, I'm really thinking that it's going to be a fundamental change in the way uh, certain people are able to uh, to work. Because mm -hmm. I've been working at home for a long time, and I enjoy not commuting. Yeah. Like spending an extra hour, hour and a half, you know, with my ducklings is 
a lot better than spending that time in traffic. I think, I mean, I see you have a point in all of that, but I just have to wonder what that level of social isolation, if we choose to really all do everything from home, or at least for the most part, even imagine like 60 to 75 percent, what is that going to do to us as a species? And, you know, especially in the time when we're already very disconnected, although we are hyper connected through technology. Yes. And uh, when you said that, a meme popped into my head. <laughs> of um, it's the meme said, uh, introverts, put down your book. Us extroverts are not OK. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. And uh, as an extrovert, yeah, I have been really just bouncing off the walls because I need to have this communication with people. And yeah. luckily, my fellow extroverts have been texting and calling, and uh, we've been, you know, been just getting by with the minimal social interactions I've been having. But you, that's another thing that's along those same lines is mental health. I had a friend call me. Uh, you know, he has been dealing with depression and, you know, some mild mental illness for his entire life. And he was really down and uh, unfortunately I wasn't there. So we called a mutual friend and he was able to go there and hang out with them and he was doing much better. But social isolation can wreak havoc on those who are uh, suffering from depression mm -hmm. and other types of uh, issues. It's mm -hmm. really unfortunate. On that same note, though, it's curious how being forced to quarantine and actually spend time in a space and not be able to distract oneself with everything out in the world is forcing a lot of people to go in and sort of focus more on what's going on mentally that may be um, behind some of the just quandaries that are currently existing. I know personally I've had a lot of friends reach out who are in a similar boat too, so it makes me just think that the state of where everyone is right now is causing a lot of contemplation. And I would think that's good, you know, inward reflection and can only make us stronger, you would hope. Yeah. But I'm glad that things like Skype and Zoom exist so that we can still all stay connected and talk and uh, yeah, work past the social distancing, which we're doing a good job of. Yeah, I think we're three and a half feet away or so. <laughs> Not quite far. <laughs> But yeah, that brings up a really good point. Um, you know, those uh, platforms are getting more robust and people are getting more familiar with them. And that's part of the reason why I really think that people are going to start working from home a lot more. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting to see whether there's a correlation with mental health. Um, I mean, I could see benefits to working from home because there's less stress environment. If you needed to take a moment to go meditate or whatever, there's not going to be anyone looking over your shoulder being sure. like, hey, you know, have you done those TPS reports? <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, it's fascinating to see, to think about what uh, changes are gonna ha occur because of these types of uh, issues. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. We, I think one thing everything can agree on, everyone can agree on, is that we live in a really interesting time. As, I mean, human history has been interesting itself, and there's always something in every generation that we have to go through, um, but it's, yeah, there's just so much change at this moment that we're all kind of navigating it together and figuring it out. And the more communication we can have, I think, the easier it'll be, hopefully. So on a brighter note, um, Mandy, you're also a nutritionist, aren't you? Yes, I am a registered holistic nutritionist. So I, before this, you were chatting about some of the uh, tips and tricks that you recommend. Do you want to share any of those with our audience who are Probably in dire need of that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's an interesting time because COVID-19 is causing a lot of people to finally think about their health. In Boulder County, this isn't as much of a concern, yeah. um, but it's you know still something that I think everyone should be paying attention to in relation or just regarding your vulnerability to getting a virus or succumbing to any sort of disease, what matters most is the state of your body. And that's why a holistic understanding of what's going on is essential. Um, first of all, stress will raise cortisol in the body, which actually is going to increase inflammation and lower your immune system. So however hard it is to stress less, I know this is a very worrisome time, please do it. Do that by doing things you love. Um, spend time with your loved ones. You know, the more oxytocin that gets produced in your bloodstream, the better you're going to feel. Um, the more serotonin, if you have some chocolate, eat a little bit of that. <laughs> um, it's a really important part. Also, there was a recent study that came out that showed that 50% of people who were contracting COVID-19 actually have compromised digestive systems. 
And I think that's really interesting just from my understanding of what supports optimal health, and that is a really healthy digestive system. And so there are a few things just to give a little attention to. First of all, a lot of people have an underactive stomach, and what I mean by that is they don't produce enough hydrochloric acid. When you feel you have heartburn, more often than not, it's because you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. Mm. Your stomach is training so hard to try and digest proteins, um, and that lack of hydrochloric stomach acid is a result of eating too much sugar, low quality um, fats, and um, too much meat as well. It's mm. hard for our bodies to process, and then we don't support the things that actually help keep it regulated and natural, like taking apple cider vinegar, um, you know, having lemon lemon juice in the morning, uh, not lemon juice, <laughs> lemon juice and water in the morning on an empty stomach. Um, and of course, you can also supplement with betaine hydrochloric acid tablets. Um, there are a few different things we can do to hydrochloric support. Hydrochloric acid tablets? Yes. That's safe? It is safe, yes. Okay. They sell those at health food stores. The way you test if you actually have low hydrochloric stomach acid is by waking up in the morning, taking one of the pills, waiting 10 minutes. If you don't feel a burning sensation, you have low hydrochloric stomach acid. If you do feel a burning sensation, drink some milk, it'll go away, and then you know that you're peachy. So that's one component of this. Um, the reason this matters is because what we eat, if it's not fully digested and broken down in the stomach, when it goes into the small intestine, it's at risk of actually leaking into the bloodstream. And when this happens, we get proteins and foreign invaders in the bloodstream. It causes um, autoimmune response, increasing, increasing inflammation and keeping us in a very um, flight or fight mode. And our adrenals are just stressing out, which increases that cortisol, which just sort of perpetuates the system, which is why autoimmune conditions are so sucky. Um, and all of this is related to the immune system. So having good digestion is essential. And we do that by taking into account the bulk of the foods we eat, you know, making sure that they're unprocessed primarily and from good quality sources. That's a big first step. Now, we also know from studies done in China that high doses of vitamin C have also been shown to be helpful in combating COVID-19. So eat some citrus. <laughs> you know, emergency. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> emergency. Um, leafy greens are a great source of nutrients. Um, they're also going to support digestion and they're abundant in vitamin C as well, too. And then, of course, as you mentioned, there's elderberry, which you can turn into a syrup. Um, I think that's one of the best <laughs> remedies there is. Um, getting enough sleep is also going to be really good for boosting your immune system. And if you have time, do that. You know, these the recipe for getting well is sort of within reach for everyone if they just do the things that line up for it. So in this time of quarantine, rest, take care of yourselves, all of that. Yeah. So what I take away from that is eat healthy, mm -hmm. eat natural as you can, mm -hmm. uh, rest, um, de-stress in any ways that you find most effective. Mm -hmm. And um, oxytocin, so be with the, around the people that you uh, care about. Give hugs to everyone, that's a big part. Well, four feet away hugs, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, those who you're quarantined with, just give each other lots of hugs. And, you know, Skype your mom or something. Enjoy it. Yeah. So Mandy, it was great chatting with you today. Likewise. Um, I think that I learned a lot. I'm sure our audience learned a lot. So I am looking forward to our next uh, meeting together. So until then, everyone stay healthy. And if you're feeling at, sick at any uh, amount at all, please be cautious and conscientious about the people around you. Don't spread it. Take the time you need in order to get better. Uh, it's not worth uh, spreading it to you know those who are immunocompromised or high risk. So absolutely, we'll get through this. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this important discussion about this deadly virus. By you staying at home, you're saving lives. So thank you for taking the sacrifice that it takes to just stay at home and do nothing. We will be having a weekly discussion on topics of business and economics. So if you are interested, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you very much.